Alright, if I'm asked to solve this using the square root property, and part of the reason that I would even think of doing that, whenever you have no middle term, whenever you don't see an x, like you see the beginning, you see the end, but you don't see the middle, the square root property is a great way to do it. So my first step here is to add 25 to both sides, so I end up getting 3x squared equals 25. Remember your goal, before you can use the square root property, you need to have the squared term alone. My next step is to divide by 3. Unfortunately, 25 is not divisible by 3, so we just leave it as a fraction. x squared is equal to 25 over 3. I now apply the square root property. When I do, this becomes x. In other words, my answers are and to find my answers, I take the square root of the constant, and I remember to put a plus or minus in front. Now, when we're taking the square root of a fraction, you basically apply the quotient rule, which says split it up. Take the square root of the top, that would become 5, and take the square root of the bottom, which is just the square root of 3. Now, we can't leave our answer like this because we're not allowed to leave a radical in a denominator. So this is where you use a technique that you were taught earlier in this course called rationalizing the denominator. We multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. What you do downstairs, you do upstairs, okay? So we end up getting plus or minus. On top, 5 root 3 is simply 5 root 3. Nothing great going on there. On the bottom, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 actually becomes the square root of 9. However, that is 3. So, there are my two answers. 5 radical 3 over 3 and a negative 5 radical 3 over 3. Okay, another, ex another equation. 2x minus 1 quantity squared equals 7. We are ready to use the square root property because I have the squared thing by itself equals a constant. On this side, we simply come out, when we apply the property, we come out with the 2x minus 1. There's no squared left. On this side, we use what the property says. You take the square root of the constant, and you remember to put a plus or minus in front. That assures you're going to get two answers which a quadratic is going to have in most cases and in the square root property you're definitely required to put it. Now we're trying to get x alone. How about this negative one we're going to add it to both sides which gives me 2x okay equals and I'm going to put the one in front 1 plus or minus the square root of 7 Always put the constant in front of the radical. It looks better and it's more done in math. And my final step is to divide by 2. Okay, and then here everything is divided by 2. These 2's are gone. x equals, and my answer is 1, 1, plus or minus the square root of 7 all over 2. And if I were to write that as separate answers, I would write 1 plus the square root of 7 all over 2, comma, 1 minus the square root of 7 all over 2 which is what I think course covers is going to require you to do.